Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up, and today we are going to be making my son's birthday card this year. So he celebrates a birthday in October, and when I saw the um, Santa's train stamp set, of course, I knew I had to have it. Um, because one of Connor's favorite things in this world are trains. He also absolutely loves Santa and penguins. So it was a win-win suite from the beginning. But in this video, we're going to be turning these trains into basically everyday trains. Or what I'm going to try to do is um, replicate Connor's favorite character trains from Thomas the Train. And it's not going to be an exact um, thing. I'm just trying to, you know, take inspiration from the trains um, to create this card. So we're going to be using some of my son's favorite colors. And we're really going to be um, having fun making this card. So this card does involve some detail work. What you see me doing here is creating a mask. Um, with a post-it so that I can remove Santa, basically. So whenever I go to ink up this train, I want to block Santa um, with the post-it mask. And what I did to create the mask was I just stamped Santa onto a post-it, trimmed it out, and I realized I should have done it in reverse, but it worked out fine. I just flipped it over and it fit over Santa in the first impression that I did, you could still sort of see the outline, so I don't think I cleaned the stamp enough, but um, with the second and the third stamps, it, it did okay. What I decided to do was remove the window, which you'll see in a little bit, but what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my Simply Chamois and I'm erasing those little bits around his arm and his hat so that I can turn this into um, an everyday train. And it, it actually turned out really well. And you'll see um, how I kind of changed this up a little bit. So if you have little ones or if you have grandkids and you want to use this train as an everyday train, it does take just a little bit of detail work, not too bad, um, but it can be done. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut, we're stamping these images in the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And then we're going to use our Stampin' Blends, um, which are alcohol-based markers, to color in the images. And I'm going to do um, three of Connor's favorite characters and um, three of his favorite colors. Now, I'm not going to be replicating the faces or anything like that. I'm just going with the guide um, of the colors and the face. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Tahitian Tide for the first train. Um, I'm going to use the combo, which means I'm going to use light and dark. What I was trying to do was decide when I wanted to add my lines, and I decided to add it after my coloring. So what I'm doing here is I am just, you know, coloring. I want to basically color the whole train a primary color. So this is Tahitian Tide Dark that I am coloring the majority of the train with here. And then for the artwork and that detailing that's on the lower part of the train, we're going to use um, Tahitian Tide Light and Dark. This is Sweet Sorbet Dark that I am using for the edges. And then I went and I grabbed a couple of Connor's toys because I couldn't remember exactly what their coloring was. And I, like I said, it's just the essence of it. Um, I just wanted it to look similar. So I decided to pull out my basic black light marker um, so that I could add pops of black throughout each, um, each train. Uh, the wheels will be black. That detail piece on the front of the train will be black. Um, and part of the funnel will be black. Um, and on the red train, which would be James, the blue train is Thomas, for anybody who's not familiar. Um, and for the red train, we're going to have a little more of the black detailing, actually. So um, I could have just colored one train and fast forwarded or, you know, just uh, omitted me doing each of the trains. But the thing is, if this is one of those things that you do want to craft along with me or you want to have the reference or the guide that you can go back to, I did want to include it because I know that this is a wildly famous 
um, character and that, you know, there are many, many little boys and girls out there who absolutely love um, this theme. And one of the greatest things about being a card maker is that when we do find those sets that we just know our family members, you know, the people that are closest to us are going to love, it's one of the first things on our list, right? Like it's one of the first things that we get. We can't wait to play with it. And even though I am absolutely going to be using this for Christmas cards um, for his class and for our family, I wanted to use it for his birthday as well. So I definitely, for this stamp set, wanted to show you the versatility and that you could create this train without it having a Christmas theme. That was like one of the most important things to me. So what we're gonna do here is I'm taking my stamp and write marker in basic black and I'm going to create my own window. So all we're doing is drawing a frame. It's just a basic squarish frame. Um, the, the lines here are not perfectly straight. Like they're, they're at very slight angles because this is like a whimsical sort of artwork, uh, stamp set. So I wanted to just stick with that as much as I could. Now here is parakeet party. So can I please just say when it comes to the new, um, in color collection, I am so grateful to whoever picked these colors because they were absolutely perfect for this card. So Tahitian Tide is a new in color. Parakeet Party is a new in color. Sweet Sorbet is a new in color. And those were the exact colors that I needed for these trains. So what we're doing here is we're um, recreating Percy, uh, which is a, a, a green train. And he's Thomas's best friend. And Percy has a little bit more of a green base than like the yellowish green. So what I decided to do was just a couple of layers. So one of the easiest things and one of the best things you can do with your alcohol markers is that you can layer beautifully. You can just keep adding color. You can mix and blend color and it really blends beautifully. So here we're adding some pops of that sweet sorbet dark again. And we're going to bring in those pops of black again and we're going to create that frame again. And when I was coloring this train, it still looks Christmassy, doesn't it? Like I just, I can't even help myself. So I was trying to stay, um, you know, close to the character, but like you can see the funnel on the tops of the toys are black and I just wanted more color. I just wanted a little bit more whimsy um, with this card for my son. So I was like, you know what? I'll do black, you know, for the front of the train and for the wheels, but for the funnel, I'm just gonna do like that base part of the funnel in black and then I'll just add color elsewhere. So again, it's up to you guys as to how you wanna color these or how close you wanna get. And if you're doing, you know, a set of trains for girls and you want to use Orchid Oasis, which is like a purple shade or polished pink and make like really pretty, um, more feminine color trains, you could do that too. Um, so what, you know, whatever works best. And this is the stamp and write marker that I'm going to use each time to recreate this window. Um, it's not an exact science. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size. You know, this is a card for kids, right? So I don't think they're going to be too picky about it. Now, um, my son is autistic, and if you're making a card for somebody who is autistic, um, they can notice details. They can get very specific, and they can be very particular. Um, so if you want to honor that or respect that, you can get as close as you possibly can, um, or you can explain to them that, you know, this is a little bit different, but um, they are definitely about the details. They can notice details. Connor definitely does. But Connor loves all trains. He loves all cars. He loves all airplanes, right? So I knew that I could keep this kind of close, but that it didn't have to be exact, you know, and he's really going to enjoy it, I think. So um, now this is our red train, which is going to be essentially the character James. So um, I, for this one, it's really more red and black instead of having like a bright pop of color, but Sweet Sorbet is like a, a pinkish red. It's still very beautiful. It's still bright, but not quite as bright as Tahitian Tide and Parakeet Party. And with this one, I went a little higher with the color. Um, and then the window became just a hair smaller, but it, it was fine. And you'll see in the end um, when you guys see the finished card that it's totally fine. So like I said, on this detail part, this is both light and dark and sweet sorbet. 
Um, and then I am going to add just a little more black on this particular funnel for this train. And that little front piece there um, is in gray. So I think it was um, Smoky Slate Dark that I was using for the gray on both like the little um, the little hubcap part of the train and then for the very, very front piece of the train. I actually liked coloring that in in yellow to make it look like a light. But for the characters, because their faces were gray, I thought I better keep the, you know, the front of the train gray. So that's what I did. Um, and as I was sort of adding in these lines, I thought to myself, um, I'm going to add just a little bit more detail to that lower line just under the window as well, because in the actual stamp, Santa's arm comes down over that. And I think it actually ended up looking pretty seamless. It's not 100% perfect, but I was really happy with it. Um, it was something that I didn't think was going to bother Connor. So um, this set has a coordinating set of dies. So I am using the bundle here and I'm going to cut out each of these trains with the train die. Um, you can fussy cut them if you want. I did. This is one of the rare instances where I'm going to use a craft knife. I almost never do that. Um, but I am, I did decide to cut out the window because it wasn't a perfect mask. Um, you can see here on the red train, like you can still see part of the outline of Santa. And even though I did a pretty good job, you know, covering it up, it just wasn't making me happy. I didn't want to stamp anything over it. I just thought I'm going to remove that window. So the die cut is going to cut out the whole train, like the, the outline of the train. And then I'm going to take a craft knife and I'm going to cut out the window of the train. So it's definitely up to you how you want to do that. Um, when you're coloring with your stamp and blends, this is something that I wanted to mention. And if you are going to be using a craft knife at all, um, use a protective surface. So this is one of those self-healing mats that I was both coloring on and that I'm going to use my craft knife on. And because I struggle to draw straight lines and cut straight lines, I just used my ruler as my guide and some of my little window edges needed a little bit of cleaning up, but it was pretty basic. So um, like I said, you can decide what you want. I like this look so much better. I was like, this is so much better because I knew I was going to put those adorable little penguins in here. Now, if I haven't mentioned it already, I'm actually using two stamp sets um, for this card. I am using uh, the Santa's train. Um, stamp set, but I am also using, um, I, I keep saying Santa's train. I think it's called Santa's delivery, um, Santa's delivery bundle. I'll, I'll put, uh, I'll put a little note up on the screen, um, of what it's, you know, technically called the bundle. And I will have all of the product information for this card available, um, on my blog for anybody who wants to shop, um, these products because, oh my gosh, they're so worth it. But, um, I knew I was going to put the penguins in the little windows here, but I'm actually using two stamp sets. I'm using the Yeti to party stamp set and I'm using Santa's delivery. So once I finally had my three trains all finished, you guys can tell um, it took a little bit of detail work. So, um, you know, it, it's it was absolutely worth it because it's, you know, it's for my son and I know he's going to love it. Um is so, you know, I might not spend this much time on every single card that I make, but I really do like to take my time when it comes to certain, when you have a certain vision for a card for somebody that you love, right? So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut and um, score and I'm taking my charming landscapes embossing folders and I'm eyeballing something here. Um, I wanted to make this a slimline card because you guys can tell by the size of that train um, I need a fair amount of space for my card. So I recently made a slimline card with the Window Wishes bundle and I loved it. So I wanted to do it again. So this is basic white card stock. What I did was I cut it to seven by eight and a half, scored at um, three and a half inches. That gives us our slimline. And then I cut a basic white layer. So we're going to do a white on white layer. And that was because I wanted to emboss this layer and I needed to experiment a little bit with how I was going to do it. Since you can see, it's just shy of the whole length of the slimline layer. So the slimline layer ended up being three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And what I decided to do was run it almost completely through. But as I got to the edge of the folder, I slowed down 
so that I didn't have a thick impression on that part. And then I reversed it. I turned the um, folder over. And even though that meant that it was going to deboss instead of emboss, I think it turned out great. You know, this is one of those things where you're not going to be looking too closely at it. You just want to have the impression because it's going to be the background with a lot of other things going on. So you'll see how it comes together. I decided to cut three train tracks because I wasn't sure um, how many I was going to need. Two ended up being sufficient for the card. I didn't even need the full length of both. And I am i didn't do a measurement on that, but like you guys can see, that's a, that's a decent length there. It's about probably four inches. Um, it might be a little bit less than that. But yeah, I used the silver um, specialty foil uh, to create these train tracks. I did that. If you guys took my card class, the Santa's... Um, the Santa Express card class, then you got to see those and use those in your card kits. And I just had, I have to keep doing it. I just love it. I thought about cutting it in gold and I was like, nope, I'm going to stick with silver. So here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my layout down. I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do here. So here comes Yeti to party. Um, I was going to use Yeti to party for a few things. I was going to use it for the, it's your birthday sentiment. Um, there's, it's actually a really large sentiment that says, um, Yeti to party, it's your birthday, but I decided to just do it's your birthday. I'm going to be stamping this banner multiple times, and I'm also going to be stamping the presents, um, uh, several times. There's two different size presents. I actually only ended up needing the small one. Um, but you guys, I want you to know what I'm doing and then I'm, I'm grabbing the little penguin from the Santa's delivery. Now I'm going to stamp all of these in the Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to be coloring with my Stampin' Blends. Now, um, I ran out of battery on my phone when I was recording, so I didn't record every single step of this, but you'll see in just a minute how all of the pieces start to come together. So... I used the same color blends on the banner, except for Daffodil Delight Dark. So the fourth, um, the fourth little banner color is in yellow, and the rest are the ones that match the train. Um, and then I colored my penguins with basic black light, just a touch of the sweet sorbet for their tongue, and then pumpkin pie dark for their feet and for their beaks, which is what I've been doing every single time I color and use these penguins because I just think it's simple and it looks perfect. So I colored my presents in the same color as the trains. So I really wanted to keep sort of a theme. I really wanted to try to keep everything looking similar. Um, so I'm just going to put my panel, the white on white panel, right down on my card base, just gluing it down flat. And then I'm going to use dimensionals on almost everything else. So I did decide to put my um, train tracks flat to the card. And I just I decided to put the banner flags flat to the card, like just glued them straight down. But the penguins, the presents, the trains and the little steam puffs are all on dimensionals. And you can decide which dimensionals you want. I used a whole variety. I used like the sheet. I used the minis. I used what I had left over from my regular ones. Um, so basically, we just want to get some dimension on our project. So um, I, I propped all of that up. And it's up to you if you want to do that. But Connor loves dimension. He's very sensory. Um, he loves bright colors. He loves shine, hence the silver foil. Um, so I really wanted to make this a fun card for him. And if you need to keep it cleaner, you know, if you need to not have it be so busy, just depending on your loved one and, um, you know, what what appeals to them, then you can definitely streamline it. You know, you can make this a regular um, A2 size card um, and, you know, you can make it much simpler and maybe you don't have to have the penguins in there. You know, maybe you don't have to add the presents. You could keep it nice and clean. It could literally just be the trains, but I knew that Connor would enjoy this. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. So as you can see the trains coming together, um, and I'm just kind of putting them on the tracks. Let me just talk a few minutes about all of the new fun things that we have going on at Stampin' Up. The number one thing that I want to mention to you is that they have a starter kit offer in the month of October, 
where you can actually get $155 worth of product for $99. So if you don't know what the starter kit is, typically you get to choose $125 worth of product from your wish list. You get to put it in a cart. You only pay $99 for it, free shipping. And then you get a 20% discount as a demonstrator and you get some perks as a demonstrator, like first access to product orders and catalogs and things like that before they launch to the public. We call them pre-orders. Um, so there are lots of perks and benefits to being a demonstrator. And no, you don't have to sell unless you would absolutely, you know, want to do that. You can certainly do it a business, you know, as a business too, if you would like. Um, but the majority of demonstrators with Stampin' Up! are actually in it for the hobby. Um, so this month there's an additional savings on the starter kit. You can actually choose 155 instead of 25, um, worth of product, which means you get a $56 product savings, um, by only paying 99 before tax. And then you still get the free shipping. So it is an absolutely incredible value, um, particularly at this time of year when we're starting to really get into the full swing of making holiday cards, Christmas cards, ornaments, gift bags, tags, all of that. Um, so if you have a wish list, that is definitely something to consider. I will have information in the description box below. And if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me. My contact information is in the description box as well. And of course, um, I have information where you can reach out to me on my blog. So that is one of the first things that I wanted to mention. And before I jump into the next thing, how cute are these banners? Oh my goodness. I love the way that they turned out. I was actually one banner short, so you did get to see me stamp and color one of the banners. Um, and I die cut them with the coordinating die. In the month of September, the Yeti um, stamp set had a coordinating bundle that you could get or um, coordinating dies. And that was what I used to cut these out. If you weren't able to get that, you can still fussy cut them. They're adorable and they're worth it. Um, but yeah, so another one of the things that I wanted to mention is that the new information for the November paper pumpkin kit has just come out and it is so cute. It's actually a gift tag kit that coordinates with this month's um, Christmas card kit that is shipping to people as we speak. So that is definitely worth checking out. I have information in the description box about that as well. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun with Paper Pumpkin over the next two months. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're looking for affordable Christmas crafting or you want to do the gift of handmade for, you know, some people outside of the, you know, typical list, you know, the helpers, charity, things like that consider Paper Pumpkin because it's such an affordable, easy, fun way to do it. And don't forget about the element of as it starts to get colder in certain areas or on those wet weather or cold, snowy weather days, this can be a great indoor family activity. Um, and this can also help you eliminate screen time because this is something that you guys could do together. So this is Connor's card. What do you guys think? Isn't it cute? Um, I stamped that uh, happy birthday sentiment. It's your birthday in Tahitian Tide. Just really trimmed it down, basically. Um, what I decided to do after I saw how this card came together with the presents on top of the train and all of that and my little penguins jumping for joy as they're driving their trains along the track, um, I wanted to add a little steam puff. So there's a, a steam puff stamp and there's a coordinating die that cuts out the steam puffs. You could do up to three um, per train, but you guys can see my card is pretty busy. So I only did one steam puff and it was the largest steam puff for each funnel for each train. So I just wanted to shout that out too. But oh my goodness, um, I just, you know, if you guys have the Yeti um, stamp set and you have the Santos delivery stamp set, use them together if you get a chance because they go so perfectly together. Um, they just make really great whimsical cards. But this is so Connor. I just love this birthday card. If you're looking for birthday cards for the train lovers in your life, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. You could very easily convert this into a Christmas card as well. All right. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, like. It helps me understand what you want to see more of and stay tuned for the next video.